While it may not be a household name like Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat, Samurai Showdown is a storied fighting game series with a legacy to uphold. Enter the 2019 version, which is simply titled Samurai Showdown, and does a great job of bringing its unique brand of methodical footsie-based 2D duels into this modern era of fighters. Samurai Showdown strips away the lengthy combos, juggles, block strings, frame traps, and other high-level fighting game techniques, leaving a game that is laser-focused on careful positioning, reading your opponent, and brutally punishing their mistakes. This level of simplicity definitely has its appeal, and Samurai Showdown strikes a good balance between approachability and deeper mechanics that help separate those who just mash and those who take the time to learn its many nuances, like the best times to deflect, when to spot dodge, when to trigger rage explosions, and of course, when to close your eyes, cross your fingers, and use a Darley Dagger Punch to pull a victory out of thin air. There's a great and easily understandable logic behind each of Samurai Showdown's four buttons. Light attacks and kicks are quick and can interrupt slower attacks, medium attacks generally have long reach and can serve as great pokes in the neutral, and heavy attacks are huge, slow swings that deal appropriately massive damage, but also come with a significant risk. Getting a heavy attack blocked generally means you're open to eating a huge punish. But what's wonderful about Samurai Showdown is the fact that mind games are prevalent at just about every juncture. As an example, my heavy just got blocked, which is typically very bad. But if I predict that the opponent is going to retaliate with their own medium or heavy, I can use a deflect to cancel out of the block stun animation, knock the sword out of their hands, and score a counter for myself. But if they predict I'm going to do that, instead of using a heavy strike, they can instead utilize a move that can't be deflected, like their one-time use super special move, and deal about 80% of my life as damage. Hard read, huge reward. And that's one of the things that makes Samurai Showdown so much fun. You get massively rewarded for good reads and massively punished for big mistakes. And while that's true in other fighters too, it's on another level here. It leads to an extraordinarily tense style of fighting that is unlike just about anything else in the genre. There are a few elements on top of the four button simplicity that add some extra depth. Returning from previous Samurai Showdowns is the Rage Gauge which increases as you take damage or land well-timed just guards. Maxing it out increases the strength of your attacks for a short while and also gives you access to your weapon for the super move, which not only does huge damage, but also disarms your opponent. Alone, the Rage Gauge is a great comeback mechanic, but what makes it extra special is the ability to use a Rage Explosion at any time to instantly gain full rage and the ability to use a devastating Lightning Blade attack. The trade-off is that once you trigger a Rage Explosion, you lose your Rage Gauge for the remainder of the match, which puts it in a good spot as a big risk versus reward trump card. My only issue with the whole system is that I wish the Rage Gauge had some sort of timer or something to let you know when it's about to run out. Samurai Showdown's cast of 16 wildly different characters is one of the best things it has going for it. Each one is brimming with personality, from the returning, screen-filling Texas Ninja Earthquake to the brand new clumsy Chinese warrior, Wu Ri Zhang, who summons a dragon on accident for a super move. and fumbles around looking for her glasses whenever she's disarmed. She's adorable. There's a ton of interesting little details to each character as well. The seven sword wielding Yoshitora has a ridiculously overpowered special move that he can only use if he manages to land all six of his other special moves in a round. <laughs> Nakaruru can fly with her bird, and then there's the aforementioned Darley Dagger, who can deal 60 to 70% damage with an unarmed armored punch. You can learn a little bit about each of these characters through a traditional, by which I mean outdated, story slash arcade mode that gives each character an intro, a conversation between themselves and a rival character, and an ending. And that's it. 
That may have been fine in 2005, but the bar has been raised for fighting game story modes since then, not only by big budget games like Mortal Kombat and Injustice, but also by Guilty Gear Third, Blaze Blue, and Soul Calibur VI, just to name a few. The worst part of it all, though, is the 30 seconds of a boring black loading screen that happens between each match, which is simply too long for a fighting game. Along with story mode, Samurai Showdown's set of modes is pretty standard. Most notable is a dojo mode that allows you to play against AI ghosts of other players, which are created based on their playstyle. Or at least that's the idea, but the reality is not very impressive. I don't know how many fights you need to really train your ghost to behave like a real person, but every ghost I've played essentially plays the exact same way. They just do this. I did get to test the netcode while playing against a buddy in casual play, and the results were remarkably smooth. However, the real test will be at launch when you're able to match against all sorts of connections. So I'll keep an eye out. For as much as Samurai Showdown manages to successfully modernize the classic fighting series and recapture the tension of its high-stakes duels, in many other ways it remains woefully in the past. The archaic story mode and long load times are a bummer, but in the areas where it matters the most, Samurai Showdown shines as a fundamentals-driven fighter that can appeal to players of all skill levels with its easy-to-grasp combat, wonderful cast of characters, and deep mechanics. For more Samurai Showdown, check out all of our gameplay clips. And for everything else, keep it here on IGN.